Hello YouTube, my name's Nero and today we have some Borderlands, a pre-sequel. You guys know that I'm just a big Borderlands nerd, I love the series a lot, and I'm excited for this new game, it's coming out in less than a month. It doesn't seem like it's that close, but it is, like the new game is coming, and it's pretty cool. So yesterday a new trailer came out, and it was basically Sir Hammerlock and Mr. Torque talking about a bunch of different features uh, within Borderlands, a pre-sequel. They went over some of the new Vault Hunters, which is four new playable ones, they're going to be different than any of the ones we've ever seen before, as well as some of the new features, like the Oz Kit system, which is going to be basically an oxygen system, because the pre-sequel is going to be built on the moon, you know, where the entire area, the entire playable area is going to be up on the moon and there's no oxygen up there so now we have to focus on Oz kits. From what I've seen from other people's videos and people have actually been able to play the game at events and stuff they basically say that there is like so many oxygen systems like all around the area that you know bringing out oxygen is never really a big deal but the big thing the oxygen kits are going to be doing is they're also going to be replacing the relic system from Borderlands 2. You may remember relics as these things that would basically give you a little buff depending on what it is you're trying to do. Uh, me for example I use Creek to Cycle a lot so I always try to find one that gives gave me a bunch of extra melee damage, like an extra 50% melee damage, something like that. And it looks like the Oz Kit system is going to do something pretty similar to that, as well as give you oxygen. One of the other features the Oz Kit has is it adds things to your Gravity Slam. So Gravity Slam is a new feature within Borderlands the pre-sequel. It fits because we're on the moon, and of course the moon's got low gravity, so we're able to fly and bounce a lot higher and things like that. And the Oz Kit will be able to buff up your Gravity Slam, which will add a bunch of different uh, incendiary damage or maybe corrosive damage, or whatever it is you're using with your particular Oz Kit. It's going to be kind of cool. It's kind of a new melee system. I'm wondering how it's going to work. I like the idea that we're going to be able to have double jumping. It's going to be something kind of similar to what Call of Duty is doing with Advanced Warfare. We're having a bunch of new movement mechanics in Advanced Warfare. We're kind of getting the same idea here within Borderlands and Pre-Sequel. Lots of games. Lots of games going with that futuristic space jumpy uh, feel as of late. But yeah, that's going to be a new feature within the Pre-Sequel. They took a good portion of the trailer to talk about some of the new weapon types within Borderlands and Pre-Sequel. It's going to be the new cryo weapons, which are basically going to be kind of like a new element to the game. It's going to be basically an ice element that can freeze your enemies and then you can destroy them once they're frozen. Uh, the new cryo weapons look pretty cool. There's also new laser weapons which remind me a lot of the E-Tech weapons from Borderlands 2 and even the Iridian weapons uh, from the original Borderlands are basically just kind of like laser guns. So we have new cryo weapons, we have new laser guns, and these are of course going to be uh, functioning a lot different than most of the other guns we've ever seen in the Borderlands series. That's going to be pretty cool. We've got Wilhelm, we've got Athena, we've got Claptrap, and we've got Misha. These are going to be our four vault hunters that we're going to be using within the pre-sequel. Of course, we all knew uh, quite a bit about these guys already, but let's just go over them once again to recap. We've got Wilhelm, who is uh, obviously a horrible person from Borderlands 2, but in this game, he is a playable vault hunter who has surveyor drones. One of them is named Wolf, one of them is named Saint. Wolf is kind of like an offensive one that kind of goes out there and he attacks. And he's kind of like a pet almost in a way, if you can picture it like that. And then you've got Saint, who always sticks next to you, always trying to heal you, always trying to help you out. And so that's basically Wilhelm's action skill ability. We have a theme whose special ability is going to have an Aspis shield and this thing when you activate it pulls up a shield that like blocks basically all damage that comes to you and then it absorbs all the damage that's being sent and the more damage it absorbs at the end of it you end up throwing it back at the enemies or you can throw it to multiple enemies and it'll do all the damage that was done to you back to them which is pretty nice you don't even have a scratch on you so Athena is kind of like a tanky character which can be pretty nice we've never seen a lot of tanky style characters and you notice with a lot of the skill trees in the pre-sequel that they're actually going to go for like an aggro style thing like certain abilities give you aggro among enemies so maybe they're kind of do more of an MMO style feel or maybe kind of like a World of Warcraft style feel where you have you know set healers and you have a tank that's supposed to absorb a lot of the damage like Athena could do I don't know what we'll to see about that but yeah she's a very tanky character lots of cool melee lots of damage over time abilities Athena's gonna be pretty neat one of the people I'm considering playing as uh, when I get my copy of the pre-sequel we've got Claptrap of course everyone loves Claptrap and everyone kind of wanted him to be a vault hunter and yes Claptrap is a vault hunter hunter his ability is kind of weird so he kind of scans the battlefield and he changes his abilities accordingly he kind of takes on abilities of different vault hunters occasionally he can summon uh the ability to be like the gunzerker from borderlands 2 and dual wield weapons sometimes he can just scan the battlefield like you know what in this situation it would be good for me to be like craig and he he pulls out his meat unicycle because get it he has he has one wheel he pulls out his meat unicycle and then he just runs around meleeing everybody like craig the psycho was sometimes he gets grows these wings kind of like lilith has you know you never know. You never know what Claptrap's going to get, but you should keep in mind that it's a very goofy ability. 
it sometimes is pretty random. Occasionally, it'll just make it so all your teammates start floating. Sometimes it just won't do anything that good for you at all. It's all kind of random. Claptrap has a lot of cool abilities. Going over his skill tree, I saw that Claptrap has a lot of healing abilities. And looking over his abilities, he kind of reminds me a lot of the healer. If, if, if I had to pick any one of these four Vault Hunters to be kind of the healing spec as compared to like what uh, we have with the Siren in Borderlands 2, I would say Claptrap has a lot of healing style abilities. So that's what Claptrap can do. He's also got a bunch of buffs. He's going to be great. He has a lot of abilities to work well with a party. I'm not sure how good he's going to be as a solo character, but if you've got a group of friends you play Borderlands with like I do, and usually you guys all play together, Claptrap is going to be a very, very useful Vault Hunter in that respect. And the final one is going to be Misha, the Lawbringer. And she's basically like a super crazy gun class where she, all of her abilities are different gun-based abilities, doing crazy damage, having great fire rates, you know, being able to reload faster, basically buffing herself to be like the best gun character ever. Her action skill ability allows her to actually uh, auto-aim, believe it or not, on the different people. So, you, you know, you start shooting at one person, then if you're playing on console, it's like a flick of the stick, and then you auto-aim onto the next person, and you start shooting them, and of course you have increased damage, increased fire rate, and all this crazy stuff. Misha is basically all about different kinds of guns. And speaking of guns, I wanted to kind of end off this little trailer analysis, if you can call it that. I'm worried that the pre-sequel is not going to have enough distinguishing factors to separate it from Borderlands 2. Of course, when you look at the game, it looks aesthetically exactly the same. Of course, we're on the moon, we have different Vault Hunters and whatnot, but it looks exactly the same graphic-wise, right? And of course, this isn't, you know, the sequel. This is a pre-sequel. It's kind of like taking the events that happen between Borderlands 1 and 2 and giving us a game kind of give us, you know, that little hole in the story. And that's kind of nice that they're doing that. But looking at this trailer, there's a lot of repeat stuff in here, especially the legendary weapons. So I've been playing tons of Borderlands. You guys know I'm a Borderlands nerd. I know a lot of this stuff. And I just decided to pick out 10 different legendary weapons that I saw in this trailer that were actually legendary weapons from Borderlands 2. And of course, by them being in this trailer, that means they're basically confirming that these legendary weapons are all going to be returning in the pre-sequel. Here we have the legendary submachine gun, the bitch. That's just, you know, cut whole cloth from uh, Borderlands 2 and put into the game. We've got the conference call shotgun, the legendary that drops off of the warrior at the end of Borderlands 2, which is pretty nice. It's uh, It was a good shotgun, then they nerfed it, and it's not so great anymore, but regardless, it's still here in the game. We have the flacker, universally regarded as probably the worst shotgun in the history of Borderlands, but it's a legendary still nonetheless, and it is in the game as confirmed here. Uh, we have the legendary rifle, the hammer buster, which of course is, you know, still in the game. You see the pictures of it here. We have the Hellfire Submachine Gun, one of my favorite legendaries, in all honesty, of Borderlands 2. It was a legendary in Borderlands 1. They brought it into Borderlands 2. I love it. I love the way it looks. I love the fact that... I love Malawan Submachine Guns. I like the gun. I love it. I'm kind of happy it's in there. But once again, it's still in here. It's basically the same uh, legendary SMG from Borderlands 2. We have the Curb Blaster, the Torque Rifle. That is, once again, going to be featured uh, in the pre-sequel, as it was a legendary in Borderlands 2. Uh, here we have the Maggie, and we're actually seeing Misha use her use one of her end abilities for one of her skill trees that allows her to have dual pistols, and she's using dual Maggies right now, which, of course, the Maggie is a legendary pistol from Borderlands 2. We have the Nukem, which is one of the uh, iconic, I'd say, legendaries from Borderlands 2. It's, of course, it's got a lot of references to Duke Nukem. I think the best possible prefix you could get uh, for the Nukem was the Derp Nukem. And the thing was ridiculously powerful. It let off like a nuclear explosion when it shot. It was a really cool uh, legendary launcher, but still, once again, you know, it's the same one that we had from uh, Borderlands 2. We have the Unkempt Herald, widely regarded as one of the most powerful weapons in Borderlands 2. Everybody had an Unkempt Herald. If you ever had trouble you know you just pull out your unkempt heralds it can get you out of a lot of sticky situations very powerful legendary pistol once again featured here in the pre-sequel and we have the volcano a legendary snipe rifle it's here once again in borderlands pre-sequel as it was in borderlands 2 and those are just 10 that i picked out there's other ones and i'm not the biggest borderlands scholar i never got all the legendaries in borderlands of course i you know that, take, that takes a lot of time it takes a lot of farming a lot of them i didn't really just have to drive to get because you know some of them weren't even that good some of them weren't really an upgrade from the stuff I already had. So I did get a bunch of legendaries in Borderlands 2. That's why all the ones I listed here are legendaries I had that I just seen just watching the trailer. I'm like, wow, I have that gun already in Borderlands 2. You know, they're reusing a bunch of legendaries and I'm worried that in the pre-sequel that they're going to kind of reuse a lot of things in that regard and I'm hoping that that's not the case. Of course, the graphics look the same. I'm okay with that. They're bringing back badass tokens and I'm okay with that. That's cool. You bring back badass tokens. I'm okay with that. I think, I think it was a pretty cool addition to the game. Of course, in Borderlands 1 actually liked weapon proficiencies a bit more because it kind of rewarded you for using a certain uh, tier of weapon rather than kind of just make everything all the same with like what we have with badass tokens. 
I think it's going to be a really similar game. I'm kind of worried about that. I'm hoping, as someone mentioned to me on Twitter, and it kind of makes sense, I'm hoping this is the case, that a lot of these weapons were just placeholders and that they don't want to put all their eggs in one basket and show everything that they have within the game already. I'm hoping that's not the case, but I think a more likely scenario is that you just decide to have all these legendaries cut whole cloth from Borderlands 2, putting them into the pre-sequel, and then just calling it a game. You know, I'm hoping that this game is not just going to be a big version of a DLC. You know how Borderlands 2 has so many different DLCs. I'm hoping that this game is actually its own game, its own whole game that we can all fall in love with and enjoy the same way we did with Borderlands 2 and that we can end up putting you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of hours into farming weapons and fighting raid bosses, doing all kinds of crazy stuff that made us fall in love with the Borderlands series. I'm hoping all that stuff is in there and that this is not just basically Borderlands 2 but on the moon. I'm hoping it's not like that. I'm hoping they at least add some weapon variety, add in new legendary weapons, new unique Unique weapons, new pearlescent weapons. You know, if we go in there and we have the same unique weapons and the same pearlescents and the same legendaries, that kind of takes away the fun of the game, you know? The, the guns in Borderlands 2 were so much different than what we had in Borderlands 1. In Borderlands 1, they were completely different. They, even look, they don't even look the same as what they had in Borderlands 2. And so once we got Borderlands 2, and we find out about all these different legendary guns and where they drop and how to get them and how good they are. We're and we're at kind of like this arms race where people are like, I want the legendaries. You know, I can remember farming Scorch for, you know, hours on end trying to to get the perfect uh, Hellfire submachine gun. I can remember trying to farm torque tokens. We farmed so many torque tokens. The uh, the barroom blitz. Oh my god, we we spent so long there. But to be able to power through there and be able to get cool legendaries uh, from the torque machines and stuff like that. I like that. That, that's the fun of the game, is the guns. The looty part is the fun part of Borderlands. It's one of the best things about it. And if they were just to literally take the entire weapon pool from Borderlands 2 and transfer it over to the pre-sequel... <sighs> That would not be very fun at all. It's like, oh boy, let's go grind for that gun I already have in Borderlands 2. You know, it doesn't sound like that'd be that fun. Of course, they add new stuff. We have the, we have the new laser weapons. We have the new uh, the cryotech weapons. But still, uh, I'm hoping that they didn't just cut everything whole cloth to put in this game. But that's the trailer. If you guys want to check out the entirety of the trailer, there's a link down in the description. It will take you to uh, Gearbox's YouTube channel where you guys can watch the full trailer. It's a long trailer. There's a lot of voice acting in it. And so because of that, I didn't, you know, kind of want to show it here. I, I, it's a 10 minute long trailer. This video would be like an hour long if we did a 10 minute long trailer and I tried to break down every second within it. I just kind of give you guys a recap of the trailer. You guys can check it out and see every single thing for yourself. And yeah, so let me know in the comments what you guys think about the pre-sequel so far. Are you guys Borderlands fans? If you're not a Borderlands fan, why not? Why aren't you? Because that game goes on sale all the time. It's such a good game. Like, Borderlands 2 is like $20 right now, I think, on Steam. Go get it if you haven't. It's a freaking amazing game. One of my favorite game series of all time. If you guys want to check out some more Borderlands stuff, I have a ton of it over on Nero's Let's Plays. It's my second channel. There's a link down in the video description to Nero's Let's Plays. Right now, we're doing a bunch of Hearthstone stuff. But uh, in the future here, we're going to be doing some more Borderlands stuff because the pre sequel's coming out, and that channel is going to just be freaking dedicated to Borderlands for a while because it's just such a fun game. I love Borderlands, and there's going to be a ton of Borderlands content. As well, if you like Borderlands 2, there's a 100 episode Let's Play, and there's a couple guides I made on there, and there's also a bunch of uh, playthroughs of the different Headhunter DLCs and stuff like that. So if you like Borderlands, you'll probably like Nero's Let's Plays. I'm excited for this game, and I'm hoping it's going to live up to the expectations we kind of have for the Borderlands series. So hope you guys all enjoyed this video. And if you did, please be sure to do a rating. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day.